Ooh, missed a step. We are on site 219 in the Wolf Loop for the weekend. And it looks like a nice one. Well, we're in the process of getting set up. Obviously, we haven't set up our tent yet. But we did set up the pens for the docks. Now, we ran into a bit of a... I'm not going to call it a problem. Uh, let's call it a hurdle when we started getting set up. You see, we have this nice rock here, which is great. It blocks the road behind it so that the dogs can't see it. But as we've discussed before, Lucifer is slightly reactive. In particular, he's reactive to visual stimuli. So he can hear a dog walking past, but if he can see it, we run into a problem. And we realize that there is a dog directly across the road on the other side. This meant we needed to get a little creative. By hanging a rope up, we were able to create a wall here of tarps. They're pegged down at the bottom and they're zip tied together to make sure that they won't move in the wind. And it's created the perfect barrier here so that little man isn't gonna get triggered and he can also relax and enjoy our trip. And as pet friendly travelers, like we wanna make sure not only do we enjoy camping, but that they're going to enjoy their trip too. So this is the best situation for everybody involved. And shout out to Kuma. As you see, the pens here are connecting on each side of the entrance to our Kuma Bear Den gazebo. And their optional privacy panels create that added privacy here for little man. So we have a space that we can hang out in the shade. The pens extend out and allow us to all sit around the fire together. And these three can play and explore and be with us and enjoy their trip as well without us having to untangle ropes and deal with all of that the entire time we're here.
right, check it on dinner. It's a pizza pie. <laughs> She's a witch! Just heading up the Nipissing Trail with Mr. Indy. We're at a Wendell Park, so first time hitting this trail here. And apparently there's about 155 steps going up. Andy's 11 years old, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Well, for both of us, but probably more for him. And then we're going to head back down. So that's where I parked. Uh, let's not go that way, dude. Good boy. Man, I'm out of shape. It's one thing I don't like about, uh, it's one thing I don't like seeing on these trails. I'll be picking that up on the way back. Count all those indie. All right, so this is the map of the trails at Orlando Park. And as you see, we are right there. And we gotta go back down the Nipissing Trail because that's where we parked. Ready to go, Indy? Yeah, let's go. Who's a happy boy? Happy boy's got slip steps. One thing I really notice at her stay at Owenda is that there's trillions all over the place. Not just this trail, but on our campground, there's quite a few and everywhere else. Um, for many that don't know, the trillium is Ontario's provincial flower. Ooh, missed a step. Filming and going down these stairs is quite fun. All right, I'm gonna do a little public service announcement here. See this? This is rude, irresponsible, and it gives us dog owners and dogs 
a bad name. Be responsible, be better. Well, Andy, I think we're about halfway down. This is a little rest stop to check out the canopy, the forest here. We're just finishing up Nipissing Trail. Beautiful Sunday. Took the extra day, so it's gonna be less people and whatnot. Did not see a single person on this trail. I don't know if that has anything to do with the 155 steps, but if I could do it, and Indy can do it, you can do it. Oh, look at you. Okay, so as you guys can see, we're still at Awenda. Today is actually pack up day. We're getting ready to go home, unfortunately. But before we leave, we wanted to take our moment to do our final thoughts here, share what we've seen, what we think, and give our final review of the park. Yeah, we arrived on Friday. It's Monday. It's our long weekend. Last weekend was the May 2-4 weekend. So we kind of tried to avoid that weekend. But yeah, here we are. And what's your thoughts? Uh, so the first thing that I noticed when we came in here is simply the, the sites aren't as private as a lot of the parks that we enjoy. So we like going places where um, our dogs can, can run and play and they don't see other dogs or people or anything like that. You're just like, we don't see other campers. You're just in a private bubble, basically. And that's not a Wenda. Um, we did share earlier in the video, you saw our setup to try and deal with Lucifer being reactive and being able to give him the privacy that he needed. Uh, so it can be done. And I wouldn't say the sites are horrible. They're not wide open. They're just not as private as we usually like. Yeah. And like, I mean, in that one video you did with Lucifer, we did show like what we had to do to accommodate him. And that's what we'll do in the future is accommodate our pups. Yeah, so, I mean, we're in, we are also in a um, hydro area. We did get a hydro site this time, um, mainly because in the cooler weather, we wanted to see if it would help baby girl who's laying behind us. That's who we keep looking at. Um, for those who don't know, our oldest dog is a 15-year-old German Shepherd mix. So she gets a lot of aches and pains at this age, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but we brought along her, like, plug-in heated dog bed for at night to see if that would help make things easier for her because she still wants to run and play and hike and swim and everything else so we paid the extra just so she could have a heated bed yeah it, it's like she finds an extra gear at camp mm -hmm. which we love for sure now speaking of hiking you and indy decided to kick things off with your own hiking adventure yeah, as you can see in the video that we went on the Nipissing Trail, um, that's one of seven, seven trails at, uh, at this park. And it's the Beaver Dam that does not, or Beaver Bond, Pond, I'm sorry, Beaver Pond that does not allow dogs on it. That one alone is only 15 minutes, but uh, yeah, uh, we went along the trail along the beach there. Um, and that was pretty nice for all of us. Um, Indy's still exhausted. Indy's still exhausted. <laughs> uh, like I said in the Nipissing video or uh, portion there, that there's 155 steps. So, I mean, it's a lot for an 11 year old dog, but he bounded through it. <laughs> and uh, then, before we're just after we pack up, I think we're going to try to hit another trail here and tire the pups out. For a quiet drive home. Yes. 
And then the other thing you saw yesterday that we did was um, we actually went down and hit the beach. Now it is May. It is not warm beach weather per se. Not so much. But our sweet senior baby girl, she can literally see water on the horizon when we're driving and gets excited. So we couldn't come somewhere that had a dog beach and not take her to the dog beach. So we made the trip over. Um, you do have to drive. It's a little bit longer. Like if you have an older dog, it would have been a long walk for her. And then, you know, they wear themselves out swimming and having to walk back would have been too much. Um, there are four beaches uh, and between first beach and second beach, well, there's four human beaches. And between first beach and second beach is the dog beach. I wouldn't say it was the worst dog beach. Like it was a good, it was a good size. There was a lot of room. It was a mix. Like there were sandy sections and rocky sections, but there was a lot of rocks. And the only catch to that is that the rocks had um, algae growth on them, which yeah. it's natural. Mm -hmm. It happens, but it makes it very slippery for the dogs. And especially ones who maybe don't have as sure a footing anymore, like our senior girl. So just something to um, prepare for and to be aware of is that it was a little bit more difficult for her to navigate than, say, when we shared the Six Mile Lake Beach. Yeah, I mean, Six Miles, it's quite... Beautiful sandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's probably up there for one of the best beaches for, for dogs. Yeah, so I wouldn't say this was our, like, least favorite dog beach by far, but it isn't our favorite either. It was nice, but there are some improvements we could have made. Yeah, you, you could definitely tell that, like, they geared that whole area there for, for humans, which, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, but, I mean, we talk about pet-friendly travel, so we want you guys to know the pet yeah. side of everything. Outside of that, the park was very pet-friendly. Um, the staff would smile and wave when they saw the dogs. We didn't run into any issues where, like, some places there's just that culture where people aren't as open to pets being around. Everyone here was great. Um, I actually took baby girl for a walk around the loop and she ended up making friends all along the way. Like at one point she got excited to see a young couple, no idea who they were. And I said, I'm sorry. Like she believes everyone's here for her. So she thinks the only reason you're walking up the road is to give her attention. And without missing a beat, the couple was like, well, we can't disappoint her. So like everyone was super, super welcoming around here. Um, we had... A couple staying next door to us. I don't know if they'll see this. If they do and they recognize us, I just want to give a shout out. I told them in person already, but just to add to that, like they had young kids and we were able to hear it was the most wholesome family vacation. Like they were just mm -hmm. having fun. And I know some people get iffy about children making noise, but I, I personally am okay with it if it's like wholesome fun noise not like screaming and swearing and acting out but like when kids are just you know laughing and playing and having a good time or in this case like at one point the one kid shouted out to his dad he said you want me to make you the perfect marshmallow like things like that are just cute and wholesome and sweet and we love it so shout out to them for having two amazing young boys staying next to us yep yeah. and then moving on to that for firewood yes so when you drive into Owenda, there are multiple, there must have been like half a dozen places where you could have picked up firewood. Um, unfortunately, they're not, you probably have to drive probably about five, ten minutes outside of the park to get to those. So um, Friday, I headed to town and grabbed some on the way back. Uh, fairly priced. Uh, three bags for $20, um, which it I, I found it to be a little too light. Yeah, it burned really fast. We did try purchasing some parkwood. Um, so for those who are in the Ontario Parks parkwood saga, uh, we haven't touched any in a couple of years at least just yeah. because it's so wet. And we decided to pick up a bag of it to try it this trip. And, um, spoiler, it's still wet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as I was picking out the bag of wood, I, w I must have spent, like, what, six hours? <laughs> <laughs> I, I spent a little bit of time trying to find the best bag that I could get. 
and it was not the best bag I could get. Um, even after, as soon as I made the first split with our, with the axe, I was just like, I'm going to get a workout trying to fan this thing going. So, Provincial Parkwood, avoid it if you can. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're still on team, buy your wood from someone local. Um, outside of that, I mean, the park is really quiet. I know it's yeah. only May, and I'm sure that it gets a lot less quiet when there's more people here. Mm -hmm. but it has been so relaxing and quiet here um the bathrooms are clean they are long drops that are near us we're in the wolf loop and the bathrooms near us are long drops they don't smell right now bad but i'm sure between the heat of the summer and the extra people that that could change yeah and if you wanted to walk do like a little extra a little walking there you can definitely hit the the comfort stations yeah and there are comfort stations placed around for you to get to um but overall i i thought it was a nice park that's a nice park i'll come back again it's somewhere i could see us making part of our routine just for like our spring you know get out for a weekend type vacations yeah especially with so many hiking trails yeah, it looks like it's snowing a little bit because of the pollen Yes, that's, my my allergies are well aware. <laughs> yeah, that's it's it's end of May, so the, the pollen is going quite well tonight today. Oh, and one big perk for anybody who likes to camp at the end of May, because I know this is a question that comes up quite often. We didn't see black flies, mosquitoes, yes, but no black flies. So this is a black fly safe zone at this time of year. Yeah, there are a few spicy sky reasons though bees bees <laughs> but yeah so i guess final rating um i wouldn't say it was a bad park i wouldn't say it's the best park it's kind of like right on that safe medium zone so i think maybe a 3.5 yeah i'll give it a three and a half as well so there you go three and a half pause and that's a wenda We'll be coming to you with our next review is McGregor Point. Now, this is one we have visited multiple times before, but we've never done a review on. And so we're going for a weekend. Um, we pushed it back later than we usually do so that we can spend some more beach time for the baby girl. And we will be on here sharing it all with you. Awesome. Stay toasty.